Welcome to our lecture on sampling and sampling distributions. To start with, there are a few terminologies that I need you to acquaint yourselves with. So we are going to define a sample. What is a sample? What is a population? And what is a sample error? From your own definition, what do you think is a sample, Ronnie? What is a sample? What is a sample error? Just use your own name and definitions so that we are on the same page. May I see what's a sample? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a, it's a small part of something. Small part. Are you getting me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes. Um, maybe it's a, a small part or let's say a quantity of uh, something. Okay. It is a small part of the subset of something, correct? So you can borrow your weight. By defining a sample, we are referring to um, a subset of individuals, of items, of data that is collected from a larger group. So we call that larger group a population. So it is sometimes very impractical to study or analyze the entire population. And so as researchers, we often require to use a representation of the entire population, which you call a sample. When you go to the hospital, they'll get a sample of your blood just to know what problems you may have. They don't need to drain all of your blood to ascertain what the problem is. A population, on the other hand, is a complete set of individuals, items, or data to a certain certain characteristics that are of interest to a researcher. So the larger group itself from which the sample is drawn is what we call a population. So to conduct a counting of all elements in a population, we call it a census. All right, a census. But if we're going to get a subset, we call it sampling. We call it sampling. So sampling has its own errors, which we call sampling error. So what is sampling error? Sampling error, by definition, is simply the discrepancy that we have between the actual statistics that we would have gotten if we went through the actual population and the sample itself. So if the mean of the actual population is five and we use the sample, we got 4.25, that 0 0.75 is a sampling error. So this one occurs due to the random nature, the rough random nature of sampling. So the smaller sample, uh, the smaller the sampling error, the more representative the sample is. So larger samples usually help reduce sampling error. So a higher sample size usually has a small something error. Okay. So the more the sample size, the lesser the sampling error. It's more accurate. So if you go into a class and you, um, out of 100, you ask how many are hungry and only three lift up their hands and you say they are, the whole class is hungry, the sampling error would be very wrong. It would be more accurate for you to the sampling error will be high. So more more accurate for you to use it on a bigger population size. Now, when we are sampling, there are different types of techniques that we can use. Generally, we have what we call the probability and non-probability sampling methods. So when we're dealing with the probability sampling, we have a few examples as follows. We have what we call the simple random sampling method. This is a very important method that is used. 
it has um it's a process where every individual item in the population has equal chance of being selected it involves using a random sample of generators drawing them from lots selecting the sample and this approach usually ensures that every part of the population has an equal opportunity to be what to be selected so that is what simple random sampling method is uh, all about We've done a simple random raffle draw the rot the lot that is usually done um is a simple random sampling method okay the other sampling methods that we have um what we call stratified sampling method this type of sampling method is one that involves dividing the entire population into subgroups called strata. They are based on specific uh, characteristics like age, gender, income level. So then a random sample is taken from each of the strata in proportion to the size of the entire population. So this type of method will help you ensure that the population is represented from different subgroups. So for instance, you get top management, middle management, and low management and you put them in one basket to get their own view so this is a unique sampling method that ensures that there is absolute representation i'm following then we also have another sampling method which we um have the assurance showing So that sampling method is very important. It has to do with numbers as well. So this sampling method is called the systematic sampling method, where we pick every nth individual from the population. So every tenth, like we do a tithe, is a systematic sampling method that God uses. We call systematic benevolence, where we give a tithe of our NX code is systematic. We also have another sampling method, which is called cluster sampling method, which is very close to um, uh, stratified, except in this, we divide the population into clusters or groups, which are often based on geographical regions or natural divisions. So when a sample is drawn from the clusters and the individuals are then selected in the clusters to be included in the sample. So this is called cluster sampling method. So these four that I mentioned are what we call probability sampling method because they have to do with what? With numbers. Are we together with following so far? Okay. And we go to another group of um, sampling, which is called non-probability sampling methods. We have convenience sampling method. We have um, snowball sampling method. We also have judgment sampling method. So these are the types of sampling methods that are there when we're dealing with non probability. So in the convenience sampling method, it involves selecting individuals who are easiest to reach or are readily available to the researcher. This method is very convenient, but kind of biased because it doesn't accurately represent the entire population. We also have the snowball sampling method, which is used when the target population is hard to find. So you use uh, by identifying those that have access to the information that be fixed a criteria, then continues growing through referrals like a snow grows. So this is what we call the snowball sampling method. Now, I've already explained how a simple random systematic cluster sampling method looks like. So now 
we're going to look at what is called the sampling distribution of the mean. So we want to predict the behavior of the means. So we need to identify what we call the central limit theorem on sampling distributions. It is also called the central limit theorem because it looks at the most important theorem of statistics. So according to this theorem, we must understand that as the sample size gets larger, the distribution of the sample mean means becomes more closely approximately normal, normal distributed. So regardless of the distribution of the population from which we can draw a sample, as a general rule of thumb, we use the assertion that the central theorem is valid for samples that are at least more than 30. So if the population is normally distributed and the sampling distribution is more than uh, 30, we usually use a Z and we assume it is normally distributed. So as the sample size increases, the distribution of the mean will constrict towards the center. So as the sample size will increase, the standard deviation of the sample will decrease. So according to the theorem, our standard uh, error will be calculated as follows, the mean over the square root of the sample size. So this sample error is very important because we'll be asked to calculate it from time and again. We use a sample error, especially when we are calculating the z-score. So in calculating our sample errors, I will give you a few examples in calculating the sample error. So we're given this question here. Let's do some few calculations now. So I've said sample error is given by the standard deviation over what? Square root of n. And this is also used when calculating the value of what? Z. So the Z is the mean, the X minus the mu over the standard error. Or alternatively, the Z is given by the mean minus standard deviation over square root of n. So I'm now interested in this sample error. And this one came in last year's exam. So I must emphasize again to say, as the sample size will increase, the distribution of the sample mean will constrict towards the center. So this means that the sample size, as it increases, the standard deviation will decrease according to the rule of thumb, all right, or the theorem. So we're given a question to answer. So this question simply reads as follows. So we are told that the random sample of 16 men from this age group selected calculate the probability that the average blood pressure of the sample will be greater than 2, 125. So this question here, firstly, we are interested in calculating our standard error. So what are we given in this question? Our standard deviation. Um, in fact, I've left some information. I need to add, we'll just add a few information on top. So we are assuming that the symbiotic blood pressure for 30 year males are normally distributed with an average of 122 and standard deviation of 10. So we've been asked to calculate um, the probability that the blood pressure of your sample will be greater than 125. So firstly, I want us to calculate uh, our sample error. So sample error for sampling error is simply standard deviation over square root of n. So our standard deviation here has been given as what? 10. Our sample size here has been given by what? 16. So our sample error will be what? Standard deviation, which is 10 over square root of what? 16. So this is 10 over 4, which is 2.5. So this is our standard error.
This is how we calculate the standard error. Okay, so let me take us to the exam question just on the sample error before I go in calculating. We are going to calculating um sampling and sample. There's a miracle kit that I had produced where there was a sample error to be calculated. So here we'll go. That's the sample error. Okay. All these questions came in the exam. So mostly questions from the exam make up your first test. So you expect the number of questions from, especially for those of you who be writing the physical. Um, yeah. So let's look at this, an executive officer. Um of a company wants to undertake a survey of huge number of policies to be undertaken. So we are told that the company makes a yearly profit on which that is distributed with a mean of 800 standard deviation 300. It is desired that the survey must be large enough to reduce the standard error to know more than 1.5% of the population mean. How large should the sample be? So this question looks complicated. It's about eight marks, but you need to digest what I've just talked about. To start with, what is the formula for our standard error? So standard error is given by what? Standard deviation over square root of n. Are we together so far? So here we've been given number one, that the standard error is 1.5% of the entire population mean. But our population mean, O, is 800. So standard error, we've been told that is 1.5% of what? 1.5% of 800. So 1.5% of 800. Is what? Oh, is it? So point zero one five times eight hundred. We're getting twelve. So here we're going to put twelve on the sample. Yeah. The standard deviation has been given as what? What is our standard deviation? How large the sample size be? The standard deviation is three hundred. So here we put three hundred. Then here we're being asked to find the sample size n. So just cross multiply square root of n is equal to 300 uh, over 12. 300 over 12, what do we get? 25. So now to find the sample size, we square, because well, this is the only way we're going to get rid of the square root. So 25 to the power of two, we're going to get 625. So this was carrying eight marks, but my people perished because of what? Lack of knowledge, understanding the concepts there. So although his calculations are a little bit seemingly complicated, but this is a concept that I want you to understand that sample error is very important because it helps you um, identify the key parameters. So when we're dealing with sampling, you must understand that we are looking at normally distributed um, distributions. So a sample is given by the formula z squared and a deviation squared over error squared. 
sample can also be given by z squared over uh, p times q divided by the error squared. Then we're also going to look at confidence interval, which is given by the mean plus minus z standard deviation over square root of n. Confidence interval in terms of proportions will be given by proportion plus minus z pq over what? n. Okay. All right, so these are the formulas we'll be working with. And um, don't get scared, these formulas will be given, but I want you to assume that you're not given. So under sampling, this course teaches you how to give estimations that are, um, are valid. So in this sample size formula, I'm interested in what is called the Z. So this Z is used for values that are greater or less or equal to eight. So these Z values will be given confidence uh, levels from 99%, 98%, 95%, 90%. So the difference between 100 and those levels is called the significance level. So our significance level here is 1%. Our significance here is 2%. Our significance level here is 5%. How am I getting that? I'm just subtracting from 100. 100 minus 90 is 10%. So the significance level and the confidence level must add up to what? One. Then here, our alpha, I just divide this by 100. So 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So this is how we find our output. Now, I'm going to use a two-tailed test for you, for starters. So I need you to, at this point, pay particular attention on the statistical tables. I have taken you through statistical tables time and again. So just a recap, statistical tables look something like this. So from these statistical tables, if I ask you to find the value of 1.96, you would go under 1.9 and 0 0.06 to find the value. So 1.9 and 0 0.06 here, what is the reading? 0 0.9750 all together. Zero point nine seven five zero. Suppose I ask you to find two point one point two seven. What's the reading? You go under one point two and another zero point zero seven. So the reading is therefore going to be the point eight nine eight zero. But if I told you from reverse to give me the Z for 0 0.8980, what is our Z? It is 1.27. So there are times when you don't have the exact figure, you have the closest figure, you can pick the closest figure. For instance, I'm looking for 9280, but this is 9279, you can still pick it. So this will give me 1.46. That is my Z. So I'm reading from P to Z. So help me, what is the reading for this one here? 96.25. What is the Z for 96.25? This probability. What is the Z for 96.25? 0 0.9625. Anyone quickly? Mm -hmm.
1.78, that is correct. 1.78. How about what's the reading for 0 0.9750? Is one point nine six. Okay. One point nine six. Now we want to now understand how to read these tables here. So to find the z values, it is one minus z alpha over what? Two. Back to alpha over two to give us a z value. So here, what is our alpha at 95%? 0 0.05. So we're going to have one minus 0 0.05 divided by two. So when we calculate that, we're going to get 0 0.9750. So now you read from inside the table, 0 0.9750. When you read from inside the table here, our Z value will therefore be 1.96. So that's how we read these values, 1.96. So at 95%, the Z is 1.96. Let's start, try 99%. So how far minus? One minus alpha over two. What is our alpha? Zero point zero one divided by two. So the z for the p value first of all. The probability, the p value. So when you do start from here, point zero one divided by two, then you subtract one minus answer. It gets zero point what? Nine nine five zero. So let's check for this one inside the table, 0 0.9950. Let's look inside the table, 0 point. Zero point nine nine five zero. So you're going to go in here. I will ask you to identify the closest possible to this. What is our Z value? 0 0.9950, what we get? The closest is zero point nine nine four nine and zero point nine. Okay, yes. So we're going to get two point what? Where's the reading two point five? These two. Two point five seven and two point five eight. Two point five seven. So you can pick any of them, five, seven, or five, eight, or the smallest one, you add a five at the end of it, because it's in, in between 0 0.57 or 2.57, all right? So at 99%, the reading here will be 2.57. Let's try 98%. What is the rule? We divide this by two. So, one minus alpha over two. So one minus zero point zero two divided by two. What do we get? The p value point zero two divided by two. We get zero point zero one. Subtract so from one, we get zero point nine nine. So p value is zero point nine nine. So zero point nine nine zero zero. Just check for zero point nine nine. Zero zero for me inside the table. Zero point nine nine zero zero. What is the reading from inside the table?
Und Was ist das Wort? 2.33. Right? 2.3. That is where the 2.33 will be coming from here. Then lastly, 10% divided by 2 will be 5% or 0.05. So subtract 0.05 from 1. What do we get? 0.05. When you get what? 0 point? 0.95. 0 0.95, correct. So 1 minus 0 point 0.10 divided by 2, we do 0 point 0.95. So let's check for 0 0.95, which one is closer inside the table. 0 0.95. Let's close it. Mm -hmm. one, one point nine. These two one point six and one point five zero five. So again, you can put the smallest of them too. Or add a five on the smaller one. So here you can say one point six four. I must admit that these ones are the most common confidence levels they'll give you. So you can master them so that we create your song. So 99%, it is 2.57. And 8% is 2.33. So you see these two, they are concana, they are consecutive here. All right. 99, 2.57, 98, 2.33. Let's go. 95, 1.96, and 90, 1.64. This one's the last two. All right, together. So let's conclude our song together. Confidence level, skin cast level. Alpha and Z. So this is the song I want us to conclude before we go through our questions to do with that. This is the most important part. So we have 99, then followed by what? 95. Hmm? Sorry, 98. 98, then? 95. 95. Then? 90. And the single level, we have what? One. Then we should add up to 100. Then here, yeah. and finally, yeah. then our alpha. So, so Reading by 100. Then here, zero, zero, zero point zero 0.02. Mm -hmm. so five, then finally, zero point ten. All right, and here is our Z two point five, five seven, five seven, correct. Yeah. Two point three three, 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 three. two point three three, correct. One point nine six. Nine, six. 1.96, excellent. 1.64. 1.64. Correct. So this is the start for your understanding. Our um our sampling. So these ones will be given. So they'll ask you to find the missing values. For instance, um I've said n is got what? Z squared, a squared over e squared. Or oh, n is good what? Z squared uh, p q over e squared. P and q is the same as the confidence level and sequence level. So q is simply the difference one minus p. So therefore it means that if p is 10%, what is q? 
90%. They must add up to 100. Okay. So let's find the missing values. Number one, if our n is missing, they've given us our standard deviation as six, as a nine, our alpha is 0 0.05, and our e is a four. But b, being asked find s, n, by are given our variance as nine, our level of significance is 1%. Our error, the use the word within, maybe three. Then also they're given us to find our N. We have been given our P, 10%, and our confidence level, 90%. And here the ask has to be within um, 3%. So part A, we use formula one. We have A, B, and C. So they ask you what sample size is required. So using formula one, let's substitute the values that we know. What is our S? What is our Z, first of all, from 0 0.05? Can somebody help me? What is the Z? Remember, 0 0.05 is the same as 5%. What is the Z for 5%? What is the Z for 5%? Same as 95%. What is the Z? Remember our song. Nine six. And what is our standard deviation? Nine. And our error? Four. So you multiply 1.96 squared and nine squared divided by four squared. We're going to get the Q count four four. That's part A. Sample size will be Z squared, A squared over E squared. So what does it? At one percent. Two point five seven. This is ninety percent. So you need to memorize it now. Uh, variance is nine. Don't square it, it's already squared as a variance. And our error is three within three. So, with that, our sample size n is equal to six point six zero four nine. Any questions so far? For now, we are calculating our sample size here. So we're not squaring this because it's already variance. Variance is S squared. If you want, you can square root it. Standard deviation, which is three, then square it back, it's the same thing. All right. Okay, let's do part C. Part C has proportions, so we're going to use different formula. N is got what? Z squared, EQ over error squared. So our Z here at 90% is 1.64. Our P is what? 10%, so 0 0.1. Meaning the Q here should be what? 90%, 0 0.9, because we know P and Q should add up to 100. Then the error, since it has been given in terms of what? In terms of um, percentage. So we are going to leave it as a decimal. So 
So here, sample size is equal to 268.96. That is our N. It also follows when you're dealing with our confidence interval. Confidence interval is the difference between the mean and the margin of error. So if I told you that it takes me 10 minutes minimum to go to school, and if I'm late, 20 minutes. So meaning the lower bound is 10 minutes, the upper bound is what? 20 minutes. So this is called the lower bound, and that is called the upper bound. Find the mean, you just sum them up to the lower bound, plus the upper bound divided by two. Okay. So 10 plus 20 divided by two, which is 15. That is how we find our mean. Our margin of error, we just find the difference, the upper bound, and that's the lower bound divided by two. So 20 minus 10 divided by 2, which is 10 over 2, we get a 5. But the actual formula for the confidence interval is simply the mean plus minus z standard deviation of the square root of n. Or the mean in terms of proportion plus minus z eq over capital N. All right. So in this case, but A, suppose the mean is 10 and the alpha is 0 0.05 and our N standard deviation, our standard deviation, for instance, maybe it is 12. Um, and here we have 36. So how do we find the confidence interval? We're going to use formula one. Let's start A. At B, suppose our proportion is 10%. Our level of significance is 1%. 2%. No, n is 36. So let's calculate these two using any of those formulas on top. So the formulas we use are going to be determined by what has been given. So part A, we're going to use formula one. So confidence interval according to the mirror formula on top is mean. What does that mean? Put a 10 there, plus minus. Z will come from this. So 0 0.05, what is our Z? 1.96. And our standard deviation is 12. Square root of n, or n is what? 36. So this will be 10 plus minus 1.96. And here we have a 2. What's that 6 square root is 6? Six. 6 into 12. It is what? 2. So 1.96 times 2 is 3 point what? 3 point. Two. Remember, this is called what? The standard error. This is called what? The said collectively, these are called the margin of error. Just for your terminologies. But it's not really important for now. So when you subtract, we're going to get the log. Is that we're subtracting? Don't start with adding. 6.08. And when you add, you're going to have what? 18.92. So this is how we find the confidence interval. They'll ask you to find a 95% confidence interval. I need you to master the songs because everything comes from where? From this thing here. 99, 1%, these are just the same. All of them are pointing to 2.58. If I gave you 2% or 98% or 0 0.02, everything is pointing to 1.2.33. If I give you 5%, 0.05 or 95%, it's coming to 1.96. If I gave you 90, 10% or 0 0.10, everything is coming from 1.64. That's why I emphasize that you need to understand this table for you to 
to with ease understand the Z values. That's why I teach you that song. Like, can you remember? Just tell me the Z value. Uh, just give me the Z value. So I have boxes here. So tell me, there are boxes, how many are they? Have box one, two, three, four, five, six. Box one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, four. So just give me the Z, what is the Z for box one? Quickly. It's 2.57. Try again. Two tasks. Box one. 2.57. That's not correct. Who wants to try? Box one. For box one. one. 1.96. 1. 1.96. 1. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Box two. So box one, this 2. is 95% or 5%. Right? Then here, box two. 2.33. Two. Same as 90, what? 98%. Box three. 1.64. 1.64. Good, 1.6% same as 90%. Box four. Quickly. 1.64. Oh. 2.57. 1.64 again. The same, yes. How about box five? 2.57. 1.57, correct, same as 99%. Box 6? 1.96. 1.96, correct. Box 7? 2.33. The second one. Box 8? 1.96. 1.96, correct. Box 9? 2.33. 1.33, correct, that's 98%. Box 10. 1.64. 1 1.64 1 worked. Box 11. 2.57. 1.57. 1.57 correct. Box 12. 2.57. All right. So you now know the song. So this is your guide. Regardless, not from which time. So definitely explain the what you're trying to do here. So here, our confidence interval is a range. So it's between what? X bar plus minus set, standard deviation over N. So here we have our 10, which is that one. But where is the 1.96 coming from? Because here we're given what? We're given our 0 0.05, all right? That's where it's coming from. Then our standard deviation and our, um, and give us a standard error, which is a two, yeah, two over root 36. So we apply this one 3.92, then get the lower bound 10 minus 3.92, and the upper bound 10 plus 3.92. Okay. All right, so let's go to part B. Part B, we're going to use formula two. Part two. So, Confidence interval is called what? Proportion plus minus Z and PQ over N. 
capital. So what is our P? 10%. What is our Z? 0.33. Then our P is 10%, meaning the Q is 90%. And our capital N is 36. So we calculate this 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 divided by 36. Square root of answer is 0 0.05. So this is our standard error, 0 0.05. 0 0.05, when you multiply it by the Z, we get our margin of error, 0.1165. So this is about 10% plus minus 11.65%. So we can subtract and add. So here we're going to have negative 0.165%. And here it is 21.65%. So we comment in terms of proportion that we are 9 to what? 8% confident. That the true proportion will lie between negative 0 0.165 and 21.65%. So that's the range we are looking at. That is the range we are looking at. So this is our estimation and basically is done. Any questions so far? So now try to find the missing values here. Exercise one A N we don't have our alpha is zero point zero one. Our standard deviation is four. Our error. Is four. But B, N, we don't have a uh, level of significance 10%. Our proportion 10%. Our error is within plus minus 2%. Then part two, find a missing confidence interval. Our n is 49, our standard deviation is uh, 14, our mean is 15, and our alpha is 0 0.02. And B, a confidence interval, we don't know. Our N is 50, our P is 30%, and our confidence level is 95%. So I'm giving you five minutes, quickly try. The question here is asking, calculate the sample size given our alpha 0.01, some division 4, and error 4. So what format do we use in question number 1? So we're going to use our sample size formula. N is equal to what? Z squared, S squared, over E squared. All right? So as they there is what? 2.57. Our standard deviation is what? Four. Our error is what? Four. Sometimes the error will be given as the weight within. So you may not find error. So you will understand that that is error. So this is how we find the sample size. Did we find that answer? Okay. That was our part A. Part B, using a proportion, so it's Z squared PQ over error squared. So meaning our Z at 10% is what? 
our P is 15%, so 0.15, meaning our Q is 85%, 0.85 divided by the within the error is what? 2%. If it's a percentage, you also leave it in decimals. 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So 0.15 times 0.85 times 1.64 squared divided by 0 0.02 squared. So here we're going to have 800 and what? 57.31. This is the sample size we're going to have. Are we following? Okay, question two, we're looking at what? Confidence interval. So confidence interval, we know is supposed to be mean plus minus Z and deviation over square root of N. So our mean here is what? 15, our Z at 2% is 2.33. And our standard deviation is 14, over square root of 49. Of nine is seven, seven to fourteen is is a two. So our standard error here is two. So you're going to have fifteen plus minus two times two point three three is four point six six. So fifteen minus four point six six, you're going to have ten point three four. Then when you add, you're going to have nineteen point six six. So we are what ninety. Uh, 8% confident that our true mean will lie between 13.34, uh, 10.34 and 19.66. So this is our confidence interval, it's a range. Okay. Lastly, if we're going to look at proportion, confidence interval for proportion, we're going to have said PQ over N. So here, what is our P? 30%. What is our Z? At 95%, this is 1.96, our PQ. So our P is 30%, our Q is 70%, and our N is 50. So our standard error, when 3 times 0 0.7 divided by 50, and square root of that answer, we're going to have 0 0.1, 0 0.064. And multiply by the Z 1.96, we're going to get uh, 0 0.3 plus minus 0 0.127. Then you can subtract and add. So in subtract, we're going to get 0 0.1, so 173. When we add, we're going to get 0 0.427. So this is 17.3% and 42.7%. That is our mean double. So this is basically what I'm from explaining, except that I've done it in a very uh, seemingly simple way. Any questions at this point? Okay, so we can go to how exam questions come. Take it to exam questions. So we're given the following question. A publishing company just published a new textbook before the company decides to price this new textbook, they want to know the average price of such textbooks in the market. So they conduct a research of 25 comparable books on their prices. So this information produced the mean of 145. And it is known that the standard deviation of textbooks is $35. And these prices are known to be normal. 
Number one, what is the mean price of such textbooks? Number two, find um 90% confidence in that for such textbooks. So already we have um been given the following data. Remember, our sample size, although sample size is less than 30, we are told it's normally distributed. So from the data we're given that our n is what? 25. Our mean um is uh, 145 x bar, and our standard deviation is what? Uh, 35. So we're being asked to calculate a point estimate. So what's the difference between a point estimate and the confidence interval? The point estimate is simply our mean value, like a single value of an estimate, like standard deviation, the mean. So our population mean is assumed to be our sample mean. So our point estimate of the mean is 145, as it is mentioned there. So there's no need of calculating it. It's on the assumption that it's normally distributed. So we're going to get, we don't need to calculate it. Unless they told us to say the sum of all the books they found was 145 and the sample size was 25. To find the mean, you divide 25 into 145. But here, we're told that is that. Then the others, a point estimate we need to understand is how to calculate our what? Our standard error. How do we calculate a standard error? It's standard deviation over square root of what? N. So our standard error is $7. Point B, calculate a 90% confidence interval. So Z plus minus X. So how do we calculate? Know that our mean is what? 145. Our standard deviation in the question was what? Our standard deviation was 35 and our sample size was 25. Sample population was 25. We are finding a 95% confidence, a 90% confidence in that. So here we know that mean plus minus z, standard deviation over square root of n. So our mean is 145. Our z is what? About 90%, 1.64. And our standard deviation is 35 over square root of what? n, 25. So we know that our standard error here, we already calculated was what, seven. So this is how the computation goes now. So 1.64 or 65, depending on the books, it's still okay, all right? So this is 1.64, so we subtract standard error and we also add the standard error. So we get the range 1.33, and the 3.45 to one. So they're being asked to find the range, so then it will be our estimate will range. So we are 90% confident that the mean price of college prices will be 133.45 and 156.55, that is our range in which we need to be. All right. So why do we usually conduct a survey and not a census? Why do we do sampling? There are several reasons. Number one, we have limited resources. Number two, we have limited time. Number three, Sometimes the sample is more sufficient than the entire population because of sampling errors. So we rather get the population. Number four, sampling sometimes may be destructive. We want to try this drug on this cancer patients and you're not really sure. So yes, so it may be destructive. So questions. Let's look at another one. An alumni association wants to estimate the mean debt of this year's graduates. It is known that the standard deviation of the debts this year is 11,800. How large a sample should be selected to estimate an 9% confidence interval 
which is within 800 of the population, right? So I've estimated, I've, I made it clear with you that questions, you need to understand um, key elements from the questions. It may look easy when somebody is solving, but let's extract some data that we have. So what are we given in this question? We have number one, our standard deviation, which is how much? 11,800. What else? The Z, uh, Z score, mm -hmm. which is uh, 2.5. 2 2.5 what? 2.57. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Error. Error is 800. What is the word Right. Uh -huh. So, what are they asking for? The confidence in the interval. Hmm? How, oh, no. How large is the sample size? Yeah. What's the formula for n? S squared. S squared. S squared. Over. S squared. So what is our z? We want what? Five seven seven. Motivation eight hundred and our error. Our error is actually eight hundred and our standard deviation is what? It's eight hundred. Yes. Um division is what? Eleven eight hundred. Yes. Oh. So when you calculate, this is what happens here. So 2.58 squared plus 1100 over 800. So you get approximately 149. Right? So like I mentioned, to say our Z, our 2.57, 2.58, right? Then I mean, that's what we do. So the required sample size is what? 1449. So this is the approximated sample size that we need. All right. So let's look at the last question so that we can, um, can leave you with. Um, Some homework. So we'll look at the T distribution some other time. All right, so let's try this together. You give me what I've been given. Okay, can you read the question? So here we're told that 64 random selected adults who buy books. So our N is what? 64. We're asked how they spend, how much they spend per, per year. So a sample produce a mean of what? 1450. And a standard deviation of what? 300. Determine a 99% confidence in that. So what do we do? Our mean is what? Our mean is what? 1450. What's our Z? Two point five seven. Our standard deviation is what? Three hundred. And our sample is what? Sixty-four. Then you can find the confidence interval. That was All right. So we end here. I'll send you questions based on what we've done. 
uh, we end here and have a good day.